Hi guys, I hope you had a great Christmas. Um, back in the workshop now and uh, just going to be looking at this PID uh, controller again today. This is the Rex C100 FK02MAN and uh, if you've been watching the other videos you'll know that this one has a relay controlling the output and it switches the uh, mains live supply uh, to the output pins and uh, that is not really uh, what we wanted it to do because it can only handle uh, 3 amps and uh, I'll show you another reason why I don't want it uh, switching any uh, any great loads in a, in a moment but really I wanted it to, uh, to power this solid state relay and uh, obviously the solution is to as somebody mentioned on the forum is just to take out the uh, the voltage that is switching this relay. Um, I've taken this apart already but quite simply you just need to push this there's a little tab here I pulled it, it's obviously already out of fraction but you just have to push that down with the screwdriver and wiggle the case out and that will just pull off. Uh, now strangely uh, the terminals are coming off with the case uh, and I'll show you why in a moment but we're just going to pull this off uh, now, in fact I'll show you that, and I really don't like this part of the design. In there you have on that end the terminals and they're attached to this case and if you look carefully you will see that they are just relying on spring tension to make contact with this board. Now, as any of the guys on the forum will know, um, over time, dirt and oxidisation tends to build up on these contacts and eventually you'll have problems with the contact between here and uh, the spring contacts in there. I, I just, you know, don't think that's a really smart design and I certainly don't want to be switching uh, up to 3 amps through the, the, uh, the relay that I'll show you in a moment. Um, so what I'm thinking I might do is actually remove all of these uh, contacts, uh, these terminals here. I'm not quite sure how they're fitted in the board at the moment. But I'm going to take all of those out and I think I will solder cables directly to these contacts and, uh, and then just have them coming out through the case. And when this is all finished I'll probably have these just siliconed in place and uh, and sealed up. It also means that there's no uh, live parts, you know, exposed on the outside. And and for anyone who's not on the forum, who's not an engineer, and is looking at this video, do bear in mind that this is connected to the live mains. Uh, and if you do something stupid, you're going to get badly burnt or killed. Um, so you know, don't be messing with stuff like this if you're not 100% certain of what you're up to. Okay. And excuse the croaky throat today, I've got this uh, funny throat thing that's doing the rounds. Um, so that's why the, the voice probably sounds a bit uh, funny, or well, funnier than it usually does anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking that we will re remove these uh, terminals and uh, just hardwire the cables straight up to this. Um, what I wanted to show you though was, there are two, this particular model has two relays uh, fitted to it and I've already unsoldered the one that uh, I need to be worrying about. There is the output relay which is uh, I think it's pins 3, 4 and 5 and if you look closely here I'm just going to point this out we have uh, live on that middle pin and that comes down to this which is pin 3 that seems to be permanently live this centre pin is a, a pin on the relay and that is internally connected to this pin here which is 5 and uh, it's switched across to uh, here when the relay is triggered when that is uh, pin number 4 uh, on this side we have the uh, 12 volt, this is a 12 volt relay, so we've got 12 volts here, that's just connected to the uh, capacitor.
capacitor which is just here, there and there. You can follow that through to that pin. Uh, hang on a sec. Yeah, that pin there and it just goes around to there. So that is always at 12 volts and then the uh, this side is where the uh, transistor is switching this to energize the relay. Um, so what I want to do is to be able to use this uh, switching 12 volts across here uh, to actually connect to the solid state relay which requires uh, 3 to 32 volts DC. So all I've done is unsoldered the relay and we're going to take that out and all I'm going to do then is with a bit of uh, resistor lead I'm just going to bridge across here and across here and that will convert pins 4 and 5 to uh, the 12 volt DC uh, supply that we need for the solid state relay. So I'm just going to might as well do this whilst we're filming. Just going to cut these leads off of this resistor. Just going to get that roughly correct. And then pop that in the other side. this is zoomed in enough for you to see this uh, just trim that off just do the other side There is another version of this relay that we mentioned before that uh, has the solid state relay output rather than this mains switching relay. Uh, I couldn't find one anywhere so I suspect uh, it's not readily available. Now I don't know whether this is a cheap Chinese copy of another PID or whether this is the genuine article so when you order one of these you know do check the connections very carefully I can't guarantee that what you get is going to be exactly the same internally uh, as my one is uh, so you know check carefully what you're uh, what you're doing um, yeah so that's it we've now got the uh, little jumpers across there uh, the other thing to bear in mind is that uh, that this is not uh, fused in any way and uh, I suspect it would probably be a smart idea just to put a, a fuse in line with the, the mains when you uh, actually wire this up. Uh, so yeah that's the, the modification done. If we get that on the camera for you there. That now allows the 12 volt supply to be available on pins three and uh, where are we? four and five and uh, so that should allow us to switch that solid state relay which is perfect and of course uh, we could rig up uh, a few solid state relays to uh, to this as well I guess this is 25 amps so of course it's going to be up to the job but you could in theory wire a couple up uh, to this um, so that's it really for, for the modifications of that. The only other thing I think I'd like to do now is to uh, see if I can get these terminals removed and um, see if it's going to make sense to wire up these, uh, these contacts permanently to the cable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like these external connections, it would mean I'd have to fit this into some sort of uh, box, plastic box, uh, you know, ABS box of some sort. Uh, 
Or I could just wire them up. I think I'll go for the take the contacts off, the terminals off route. I'll see how easy these are to get off. I won't bother with that on the, on this video. I really just wanted to show you that uh, modification to uh, take the relay out and just enable the 12 volts to be available uh, uh, on the terminals. So yeah, that's it. And when you're done, that just slides uh, back in, obviously. If you want a closer look, there's, I mean, there's not a hell of a lot going on here. You can see the LEDs through the top there that are just uh, lighting uh, the thing, the windows up here. There's not a hell of a lot to it, really. And you wouldn't expect there would be for the price that that was, which I forget now, but it was only 10 or 12 pounds, something like that. I've also ordered the PC410 now, which is the, the bigger brother of this, which has the, uh, the multiple programmable steps of temperature and dwell time and uh, ramp value, things like that. So that's now on order from, uh, I think it was China. So I expect we'll get that sometime in the new year. Uh, but yeah, that one is now modified. And uh, I'll just see if I can get these terminals off, and uh, I might show you that when it's uh, if if and when I achieve that. Okay, I'll uh, I'll catch you later.